Hey, what's going on guys? This is Broku, and welcome back to my channel. The What If Beerus Woke Up After GT series is my longest running series and one of my most successful, as the first part got over a million views, and this series overall has tens of thousands of likes. It is very well supported, and I thank you so much for all the support. So I've decided to add in the final part, as well as create this episode into one final long movie. If you've seen all the parts recently, you can check the chapters in the description to go to the final part, but I know most of you have probably not watched this series in a long time. So I have put it all into a movie so you can rewatch it and then see the official ending of this what if. If you have any other what ifs that you would want me to finish, let me know in the comments down below. Remember guys, this does get crazy, and remember, if you see anything crazy happening here, that most of this was written before the Dragon Ball Super anime was finished. So, there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens based on fan theories while in the middle of Dragon Ball Super running that were then officially negated and debunked because the series just went in a different way. Please, let's shoot for 1,000 likes for my return to the Dragon Ball Super community. Hope you guys do enjoy. This is a super long What If series, so I hope you guys do enjoy. Grab some popcorn, grab some soda, and let's get into it. What If Beerus Woke Up After GT? The full movie. Now when Beerus wakes up to go look for the Super Saiyan God, he's going to be very impressed even when he just meets Goku without God Key. As Goku in his base form would be at least 20,000 times more powerful than Super Saiyan 3 Goku in Dragon Ball Super. And remember, Beerus was at least slightly interested in how strong Super Saiyan 3 Goku was. And Goku in his base form is thousands of times stronger than that. Beerus is going to take note. Even with how powerful Goku would be at Super Saiyan 4, he wouldn't be even close to be able to beat Beerus. Beerus is much stronger, and he has the distinct advantage of God Key. While Goku has put up a decent fight against a Beerus using nowhere near 1% of his power, he has failed. Beerus incapacitates Goku causing him to revert back to his base form. Everyone is shocked. Trunks tells Goku that he needs to fuse with Vegeta to make Gogeta. Goku states that not even that would be strong enough to stop Beerus. Everyone is scared and they believe that Beerus is going to destroy the Earth. And that is when Goku comes up with the idea of going to Namek to wish for the Dragon Balls since Earths are gone now. Beerus says they don't have much time so Goku instant transmissions to Namek where he meets with the Namekians and tells them of their situation. Goku makes his wish and discovers how to become a Super Saiyan God. Goku comes back, he tells everybody about the ritual, and the Saiyans agree. But Vegeta only agrees if he can do the ritual right after Goku does it. They do the ritual, and it works. Goku becomes a Super Saiyan God, but his power is much stronger than when Goku first achieved this transformation in Super. Just the transformation ripples the entire universe. Seconds after, Goku takes Vegeta's spot and Vegeta takes Goku's spot and they perform the ritual on Vegeta. Once Vegeta achieves the godly power, he rushes after Beerus. Beerus is in love. He is having his first real battle against the Super Saiyan God that he's been dreaming about. He hadn't been challenged like this in millennia. Goku joins in. And now we have two GT level Super Saiyan Gods fighting Beerus at the same time. Beerus is beyond excited. He can now use moves he never had used before because his opponents were far too weak. Goku and Vegeta are still shocked that Beerus is able to hold up against their powerful new forms. Goku and Vegeta and their Super Saiyan God form are around three times as powerful as the current Super Base forms for Goku and Vegeta, which is much stronger than the original Super Saiyan God. Goku loses a transformation. Everyone is shocked. Beerus scoffs as he didn't think there would be a time limit and he said that the fight is now over. Vegeta rushes to Beerus and mid-punch loses his transformation as well. Beerus said it wasn't fair anymore and decided to stop, but he was really satisfied with the fight he had gotten fighting two Super Saiyan Gods at once. Until Goten, Gohan, and Trunks notice something, their fathers, despite in their base forms, their ki were many times higher in their base form than their old Super Saiyan 4 forms, and the ki just felt different. Beerus then states, I can still sense a tiny bit of God Key in you guys. It seems you didn't lose the transformation, but you absorbed it. Excited, Vegeta and Goku immediately turned Super Saiyan, 
and lunged towards Beerus. Beerus is caught off guard and is knocked around a bit by the super-powered Saiyans before he raises his power to fight back. Goku and Vegeta slowly getting used to their newfound power slowly ascend to each Super Saiyan level while the fight progresses. Super Saiyan 2, then Super Saiyan 3, and yes, we finally get to see a Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. They transform into Super Saiyan 4 and the fight continues. The shockwaves have destroyed dozens of planets and stars in the universes and has sent ripples into other universes. The now multiversal conflict catches the attention of Xeno. Beerus beginning to slow down against the godly Super Saiyan 4s is visibly bloodied and has sweat dripping down. This is the first real fight he has had since before he was even a god of destruction. During the fight, Whis ends it by saying it has caused too much destruction. As the Saiyans revert to their base forms, Zeno arrives. He's wondering what is going on because he didn't know what fighting was called, but he had watched the entire fight on GodTube that Whis was streaming. He was very intrigued. This is where Goku convinces Zeno to have a universal tournament, and Zeno, you know, is very interested, so he starts figuring it out. Everyone finds out about the multiple universes and different gods and angels and who Zeno was. Goku and Vegeta go off to train with Whis. They get so strong, they achieve Super Saiyan Blue, and even their regular Super Saiyan forms become more powerful than Goku and Super Saiyan Blue and Dragon Ball Super. Frieza never comes. Since Goku didn't befriend gods until years after he originally went bad, Zamasu is now a Supreme Kai, who is now moral and mature. He has long since lost his old feelings about mortals. By the time the Tournament of Power has started, Goku and Vegeta have been training with Whis for a while, and now they are so strong that they have even surpassed Beerus. The Zen exhibition matches come, and instead of Boo, it's Majub. Gohan stays and is now the top dog replacing Goku, who fights Bergamo, while Goten comes in and fights Lavenda. Majub, being much stronger than Boo, bodies Basil. Goten has a similar fight as Gohan did against Lavenda. He gets poisoned, has to use his senses to try and beat him, but just before Goten is about to lose and succumb to the poisoned, he achieves Super Saiyan 2 for the first time and at the last second knocks out Lavenda. Gohan tries to fight Bergamo, but Bergamo keeps taking his power. Gohan is trying to think his way out of it, but Bergamo becomes so strong and beats Gohan. An interesting turn of events. Tapo comes down from the audience and challenges Goku, who is watching his two sons and protege fight in the exhibition matches. Goku toys with Topo, and his base he is suppressed and is fighting near equally to the Pride Trooper leader. Goku gets bored as Topo is just nothing to him. He transforms into a Super Saiyan and in a flash takes out Topo bloodying him and knocking him unconscious. Universe 11 and the crowd is shocked on how easily Goku was able to take out the famed Topo, leader of the Pride Troopers. This causes the universes to want to team up even more to take out Universe 7 and Goku. But at this point, it literally wouldn't do much. Goku and Vegeta are just unbelievably stronger and they have both surpassed Beerus at this point, which is speculated to be the strongest god of destruction, or at least up there. Now. Some of the Universe 7 fighters got some good licks on the other universes' fighters, but Goku and, and Vegeta, they basically single-handedly take out the playing field and pretty much clean shop. Goku wishes for the other universes' inhabitants to be transported to Universe 7 so they can keep living, and Goku goes from villain to hero. Now, this would be very interesting because Goku and Vegeta would be way stronger if they went Super Saiyan Gods at the end of GT, and they would have been so strong that they would have just easily wiped the floor with anybody on the Tournament of Power. They probably could have been, probably just Goku could have been the sole representative of Universe 7, and he probably could have won against all of the, like, 70 other fighters, and he would probably win. That's how strong he is at this point. So at the onset of the Tournament of Power, which led to Goku and Vegeta leading Universe 7 to victory, Goku had wished that all of the universes who are raced had their inhabitants moved to Universe 7 so that they could live on. This made Goku go from a villain to a hero in most of the fighters' eyes. He saved literally quadrillions of people, and this made a certain individual very unhappy. The Grand Priest was extremely pissed off. The whole point of the tournament was to make it easier for the gods to manage the universes. With all the inhabitants crammed into one universe, it really doesn't change much. Grand Priest, he's mad at Zeno. 
and tries to come up with a scheme to get what he wants. The Grand Priest counsels with the four universes, angels, gods, and Supreme Kais, the ones who didn't partake in the tournament. They all agreed that something needed to be done with Universe 7, as the balance of universes had been ruined. Now one universe has all the power and the majority of the inhabitants. The Grand Priest suggests the four gods of destruction to go take on Beerus, Goku, and Vegeta. Taking these three out would lead to a successful invasion from supplementary fighters. The four gods of destruction were very hesitant. Despite not participating in the tournament, they saw the display of power from both Goku and Vegeta. They suggest that the Grand Priest should finally, after all these years, should step in on his own and not seek acts from the other gods. The Grand Priest, although pissed off from their insolence, sees their logic. There is no way that they have really much of a chance against Goku, and a failed attack could lead to more time for Goku and the others from Universe 7 to get stronger, or to even warn Zeno, or lead the attack to his attention. The Grand Priest gets a DVD collection of many different tournament fights so that Zeno can stay occupied and distracted from what he's about to do, and so he won't intervene. Beerus and Whis are eating food on their planet when all of a sudden the Grand Priest teleports in. Beerus and Whis are puzzled as to why the random appearance from the Grand Priest. They assumed he was coming to congratulate them on their universe's victory in the tournament, and that his universe still found a way for quadrillions of innocents to not be erased. Beerus boasted, Come here to congratulate me? The Grand Priest says, No, quite the opposite. This universe, your universe, has become quite a problem. Beerus has a very confused look on his face. Your time as the God of Destruction is over, and so is this universe. Before Beerus can even comprehend the statement from the Grand Priest, a hole is blown through his stomach. The Grand Priest's hand is still smoking from the emitted blast. Beerus is shocked. He falls to the ground. He was slowly dying. He couldn't believe what was happening. His many millennia of service had gone to waste. Memories started flashing through Beerus' head. He remembered when he first became God of Destruction. He was revered by the other universes. He was an amazing god. He did his job very well. And then, he got lazy. He looked up at a shocked, panicked Whis. Beerus could tell from looking at Whis that he did not know about this. Beerus' eyes closed slowly, and the seventh god of destruction was no more. The Z-Fighters were having a massive barbecue outside of the Capsule Corp. Many of the other universe's inhabitants were there like Kaba, Hit, and Topo. They were all celebrating not only the victory of Universe 7, but the survival of all the universes. Supreme Kai was there. He was in mid-conversation with Piccolo before he collapsed to the ground. His food went everywhere. Everyone rushed to him, even the old Kai. Both Majub and Dende tried to heal him, but to no avail. The old Kai stated that he has no injuries. He hasn't been poisoned. There is only one explanation for this. Beerus has died. Goku realizing immediately uses instant transmission to teleport to Beerus' planet. He finds a dead Beerus and a Whis that is entrapped inside the Kachi Kachi metal, similar to Han Solo from Star Wars. Puzzled, Goku teleports back to Earth, to find most of the partygoers gone, wounded, or dead. Capsule Corp has been destroyed. He sees Majub, Gohan, Hit, Jiren, and Topo trying to fight off someone. It was the Grand Priest. The Grand Priest was very excited for Goku to join. He was going to have Goku tortured for a millennia before he lets him die. Goku has caused too many problems in the multiverse. Goku and Vegeta both turned Super Saiyan Blue and now have surpassed the power of Beerus. They rush to fight the priest who is making quick work of the pride troopers. Goku and Vegeta are the only ones with a chance, so they tell everybody to leave. The Grand Priest is toying with the two Saiyans. Seems that there is no hope for the universe. The Grand Priest is just too strong. That is when Majub shows up. Goku says that you need to get out of here. You have no chance. That is when Majub opens his hand. The Bator earrings are in his palm, as well as some sensu beans. Goku and Vegeta realize that this is their only option, to become Vegito again and for the last time. Now remember, because of the no Goku Black arc, they don't know that Vegito is really only a one hour time limit, so they think it's permanent. They put on the earrings and out comes Vegito. He quickly goes blue and rushes to the Grand Priest. Although Vegito Blue is faring much better, he is still outmatched by the Angelic God. Most hits are dodged, and the ones that he lands don't affect the Priest very much. Despite Vegito being extremely strong, his attempts seem futile. 
The pride of Vegeta on the inside gets the best of him. How could the ultimate Saiyan god lose to a shrimp like him? This triggers something inside of Vegito. His tail emerges and he transforms into a blue ape. This ape is still the same size as Vegito. It doesn't get huge. It seems he is able to withhold the ape transformation easier. He then turns into Super Saiyan 4 Blue Vegito. It is so powerful that it leads to the Grand Priest trembling to his knees. His plan was falling apart. He didn't account for a fusion and a new transformation. Vegito rushes to the priest in his new form and pummels the Grand Priest in the ground. He gets blow after blow onto the Master Angel. Vegito puts all his injury into the one final punch, and right before it connects, Vegito defuses. They were very confused as they don't know what's going on, they thought it was permanent. But they both transform into Super Saiyan 4 Blue on their own. Despite reveling in their own new powerful transformation, they are just still not enough for the weakened Grand Priest. Out of nowhere, the Priest is surrounded in green injury, and he's being tormented. They look and see a combined blast from Whis and Vados' staff into their father. The attack lasts minutes. Whis and Vados put all their energy into the attack and they fall to their death. Despite pissing off the priest, it also cut his power in half, making it so that Goku and Vegeta could actually put up a fight against him. Mid-fight, Goku and Vegeta are struggling, but with the help of Hit using his time skip against the priest and for Goku and Vegeta, they slowly and slowly use it against the priest, wear him down until they knock him unconscious and they have won the fight. Goku arrives at Zeno's with a bloodied, unconscious Grand Priest. Goku explains what happens, and Zeno erases the Grand Priest, and begins to rebuild the damage that the Grand Priest has committed. Basically, after this, Bardock, he continually trains to increase his base form, like, many times. Not, like, hundreds of thousands, but, like, tens of times stronger. He can get Super Saiyan 2, and he goes Super Saiyan 3. He actually finds other, like, early, very old Saiyans. And they're, not, they're not old, but, like, an old breed of Saiyans. And he starts, like, training them as, as well. He's, like, a village with them. He's hanging out with them. And one day, Bardock, with his foresight, has a flash-forward dream, or an epiphany. It tells him that he needs to go with Ozaru and master that form. So before this, Bardock had actually trained himself to not go with Ozaru, even after looking directly at a full moon. He did this because Ozaru was dangerous and not really needed since the Super Saiyan form was actually a much better form than Ozaru. So Barnock then goes to Ozaru, Golden Ozaru to be exact, and he's able to tame his own beast, and Bardock goes Super Saiyan 4. Now, after this, some time passes, and Bardock is still just in the village. He's like the leader of the village. He protects the Saiyans from other beings on the planet, and he wants to be the defender of the planet overall. And that's when Bardock foresees a pink demon heading towards the planet. Yes, Majin Buu is heading towards his planet. What he realizes is that this guy, he doesn't seem to be like running towards the planet to destroy it, but he seems to be running from someone or something. So Bardock goes and stops him, and he, he already foresaw this being, otherwise known as Kid Buu, trying to destroy this planet on his way there. So Bardock actually powers up to Super Saiyan 4 and fights Kid Buu. So even though Bardock has the Super Saiyan 4 form, his base form is so weak that he still isn't even as strong as Super Saiyan 3 Goku during the Buu Saga. But Bardock still takes on Buu and holds him off a bit before Buu looks extra scared and then runs away. A bit of time passes and Whis and the God of Destruction arrives. But this is not actually Beerus. In fact, this is a whole different God of Destruction. A Namekian God of Destruction. Let's call him Vuvu. <laughs> so I just found this name on a Namekian name generator website. And honestly, I thought this would be the best one. It looks like 10 names. But anyways, Vuvu, the God of Destruction of Universe 7, a Namekian. Who are you? Vuvu questions Bardock. Uh, my name, my name's Bardock. Who are you? Like you have the right to question a god of destruction. God of destruction? Bardock asks. And this is when Whis begins to explain to Bardock everything about the gods and the angels. Have you seen a small pink guy flying around? Ah, uh, yes, I have. He just fought me. He was very strong. I would, uh, watch out for him. Majin Buu is nothing to me in terms of power. I could destroy him by looking at him if I wanted to. I just want to bring him in for questioning. I don't want to hire him so that when I am too lazy, he can destroy planets for me. Whis and Vuvu fly off, and Bardock returns to the village. He's really perturbed by this occurrence. How could someone be so strong? Bardock's foresight sees many things. Himself wearing the same clothes as Vuvu in the future, 
implying that Bardock might be a god of destruction. His, science, his, his Saiyan friends surrounding Bardock as if they were doing some sort of ritual. And after this, Bardock broke his meditation and told his friends of this, his Saiyan counterparts, that in his dream they were all together and at the end, Bardock had this red aura around him and he was seeming to have the power of the god. And they said they should try to do what is in his vision as Bardock is never wrong. And so they gather around Bardock and Super Saiyan God Bardock is born. This power amazes Bardock himself and the other Saiyans are astonished with his aura as well. And this causes Vuvu and Whis to return. As they are intrigued as to how this Saiyan has achieved power of the gods, Vuvu and Bardock square off and Bardock actually puts up a big fight, never backing down. Whis, it's decided then. This here Bardock will become my replacement for God of Destruction of the 7th Universe. I'm gonna become a god? Yes, Whis will train you. I have been a god for too long and my time is up. You must defeat me first though before you become a god. So Bardock accepts this and he then trains with Whis for a couple years, mastering his god key, he achieves Super Saiyan Blue, he achieves Super Saiyan God, and he can even go Super Saiyan 4 Blue. So yes, in this fanfiction, I'm making Super Saiyan 4 Blue a possibility, because it honestly could probably work, but again, it's not confirmed. So Super Saiyan 4 Blue Bardock squares off against Vuvu. The battle of potential gods of destructions ensues, and Bardock actually wins pretty easily in this fight. Bardock, you sure are a tough one. I just wish you could have seen me in my prime. Over the many eons, my body has weakened on me and I have refused to even train it anymore. And Vuvu lays out his hand for Bardock and smiles at him. Bardock is confused but grabs his hand. Vuvu has transferred his god powers to Bardock and Bardock is reveling in his newfound power. He doesn't even need to go Super Saiyan God to have God Key anymore. And now even his base form has become several times stronger than what a Super Saiyan 4 Blue form was. Also, I want to mention is that I'm saying in this, Whis actually loses memories of his previous Gods of Destruction so that it doesn't have any like sort of conflict of interest. So that's why when Whis trains Bardock, he doesn't remember Bardock looking like Goku or a Saiyan having Super Saiyan God or Super Saiyan Blue. Bardock spends many years training physically and mentally. Eventually, he learns self-movement from Whis but doesn't master it and he even goes Super Saiyan White. Yes, this is a made-up form, but so so be it. I think Super Saiyan White is cool. And I'm going to say that Super Saiyan White is several times stronger than Super Saiyan 4 Blue. So Bardock over the thousands of the years that he is a god increases his power many times. But his main objective besides his job is trying to attain Super Saiyan 4 White. He was really confused because he was able to get Super Saiyan 4 and then Super Saiyan 4 Blue. But over the many years he could never get Super Saiyan 4 White and he can't seem to get over it. He gets to the point where he is aging rapidly and losing his strength because he is so focused on training that he is just putting a massive strain on his body. Bardock even tries to put himself in dangerous situations so that he can maybe trigger this form, but he still couldn't as even he challenged all of the 17 other gods of destruction at the same time. And Bardock was so strong though that even as a Super Saiyan White, easily took them all on and defeated them with absolute ease. And he was even so strong that he challenged Whis and Vados at the same time, and Bardock as a Super Saiyan White was able to fight these guys, these two angels, similar to the fight of Raditz versus Goku and Piccolo, with Bardock being Raditz in that scenario, and the angels being Goku and Piccolo. So not a really a close fight at all. Eventually Whis brought up to Bardock that he was overstressing his body so much that he wasn't able to be a god for much longer, and he would have to seek a new apprentice. And one day Whis and his new apprentice showed up, and his name was Barley. So Barley is a ingredient that goes into making beer, and since there is a lot of alcohol names for the gods, and Beerus, his name is from beer, I thought this would be perfect for Barley to be Beerus's father. So before the training even begins with Barley, Barley challenges Bardock and he can't even break Bardock's natural key barrier similar to base Goku vs Jiren. And then Bardock blinks away Barley, nearly killing him. Whis takes Barley and he begins his training. And after three years, Whis thinks that it's time for Barley to have a rematch against Bardock to show how much he's improved. And Barley is able to take on base Bardock pretty good and then once he powers up, Bardock has to go Super Saiyan to actually match Barley. And Barley has a purple aura when he powers up so that shows he does have god power inside of him. But once Bardock goes Super Saiyan Blue, he's able to defeat Barley in a single punch. So just to let you know Barley, I've actually gotten weaker myself. I'm not even half as strong as I was when we last fought several years ago. So don't get so confident that you are really improving that much. We don't bring Barley back here until he actually has a chance against me. Three years is simply not enough. Training to surpass me, wait at least five years. And five years pass again. Barley has learned many more and has nearly mastered God Key 
and he's even dabbling with a bit of self-movement. At this point, Barley is very confident that he can defeat Bardock. You think you can defeat me? Well, I'm not even a tenth of what I was when we last fought, but it doesn't matter because you don't have a chance in hell with me. This pisses Barley off and their fight begins, and Bardock this time starts off as a Super Saiyan Blue, and Barley even has an advantage. And once Bardock goes Super Saiyan 4 Blue, he actually does that because he has to keep up with Barley because Barley has gotten so strong. They're pretty even, but Bardock actually goes Super Saiyan White to defeat Barley. And Barley is just shocked with all these different transformations and the power of Bardock despite him getting weaker. Whis, Barley is much stronger than I expected. With his power increasing and mind decreasing, it won't be long until he has surpassed me. One more year and that should do it. Good luck to you, Barley. Barley's having a sense of accomplishment and is proud. He actually got some recognition of the God of Destruction. A year passes and now Bardock is actually walking like he's an old man. He has trained himself too much trying to achieve Super Saiyan 4 White. And Barley arrives and he's finally ready to take on Bardock and defeat him. And Whis says, by the way, Barley, this is your last chance to defeat Bardock. You get three tries once you've been training. And you've already had two tries. If you fail this time, you will never be put as a god of destruction. And you will be erased by Bardock. Barley is shocked and he knows that there's no other way. He has to win this. And Bardock immediately powers up to Super Saiyan White. And Barley powers up to 100%. And the fight seems to be pretty even. But Barley eventually begins to overpower Bardock. With one hard punch, he hits Bardock so hard that Bardock reverts to his regular Super Saiyan Blue form. And the beatdown ensues. Barley beats the absolute crap out of Bardock. And Bardock reverts to his base form after seconds of the beatdown. Barley then walks away feeling as if he had won. Don't ever act as if it's over, unless if it is truly over, Bardock yells. Barley is shocked and turns around, and Super Saiyan White Bardock has launched a big key blast at him. Barley barely deflects it, but Bardock is already behind him as it was just a distraction. Bardock has his hand up and yells, Hakai. But Bardock is so weak that in the middle of the attack, the attack just fizzles out of his hand and he reverts back to Super Saiyan Blue. And Barley d knocks him away with one punch. Just know if I was in my prime, you would never beat me. But you have gotten much stronger and you truly do deserve being God of Destruction. Barley becomes God of Destruction and Bardock transfers his God powers to him and rests for several years, letting his body recuperate with his intense training. Whis has now forgotten about Bardock and only knows of Barley now. And Bardock is now living a normal life and he's actually confronted by the new Grand Priest. The God of Destruction of Universe 13 has just been killed by a villain in his universe. Barley intervened and defeated the villain, but now Universe 13 needs a new god. Can you be the replacement for just a few years before we can find one? Uh, sure, but only for a few years. I really need to rest? as I've strained my body way too much, as that's what Bardock is in response. Grand Priest says, Great, Bardock, come with me and I'll introduce you to your new angel and your new universe. A few years pass and Bardock is the God of Destruction of Universe 13, and he's ready to return to his universe and be done. The God of Destruction and training is not ready yet. And then all of a sudden, everything, including Bardock, disappears. Bardock, after realizing he had been brought back, was traveling the vast universe looking around. He had never seen a universe so populated. As remember, there are now the population and planets of 14 universes crammed inside of Universe 7. Bardock landed on a planet filled with beings he has never heard of or seen before, an entire group of people who look like dogs and wolves. Bardock is wandering around as the people look at him weird. He definitely stuck out like a sore thumb. This is when Bardock sees a short bearded man with God of Destruction garb on. It was Sidra. Sidra! Bardock yelled towards him. Bardock had fond memories with Sidra, drinking and eating together and talking about useless planets they destroyed. Sidra isn't seeking any people right now. A figure stands between Bardock and Sidra. It is Bergamo. From behind him, his two brothers separate and the trio of dangers are what is standing in his way between the old ninth god of destruction. Move. Sidra and I go way back. We are friends. Funny. He has never mentioned a human with spiky hair to us, as they all snarl at him. Bardock takes a step forward, and the trio to dangerous strike. Basil's kick doesn't have any effect on Bardock, and it actually hurts him. Lavender's poison is reverted back onto him as Bardock blocks it, and Bergamo tries to steal Bardock's power, but in a flick, he is defeated. How dare you stand up to me? I am Bardock, old god of destruction of Universe 13, and former god of destruction of Universe 7. Bardock? Sidra looks over at the commotion, Curiously. Wow, Bardock, it's been a while. I was wondering when I would see you staggering around again. What happened? Bardock asked. Well, many years ago, Zeno erased universes 13 through 18. That is why you just disappeared and you didn't exist anymore. Then, just recently, 
Xeno held a martial arts tournament where the losers were erased as well, but the winners just didn't survive. They also got a wish from the Super Dragon Balls, and your old Universe 7, which won the tournament, wished to have all the universes brought back and basically combined with their universe. Wow, it's been this long, huh? A tournament? That sounds crazy. What was the name of the seventh God of Destruction that won it? Well, gods didn't partake. They had teams of mortals fight in their place. But the seventh God of Destruction is Beerus, son of Barley. Barley had a son? And he didn't last that long as a god, huh? He must have died an early death. Yeah, you could put it that way, I guess. So Universe 7 was that good, that strong? I am proud of my old universe. Yes, well in fact, several Saiyans were fighting in this tournament. They were by far the strongest mortals in history, these Saiyans, even surpassing their own gods of destruction. One actually looked quite like you. He and all the other Saiyans took a planet called Earth as their homeworld. Earth? M my, my son, Kakarot? The same planet he was sent to? Could it be that he somehow didn't destroy the planet, and then he surpassed even the gods eventually? He must have also defeated Frieza as well, just like I had foreseen. This is what Bardock thought to himself. Wow, mortal surpassing the gods, huh? That is something. Yes, Bardock, but they still are nowhere close to what you got to. Maybe you should go find them and see what your race is all about. Eh, I don't know. I need to find my old Supreme Kai and Angel, and there are others I need to meet with from Universe 13 before I go on, out on this side task. This is where Bardock takes some time and uh, ends up finding his old Kai and his angel and is greeting them. He also meets some of the old high-ranking mortals of Universe 13 and reconnects with them. Meanwhile, this is when the fight between Goku and friends against the Grand Priest happens. Bardock, though, finally decides to check out Earth after the whole Grand Priest debacle and to see if the Saiyan beyond the gods is his son. Bardock lands on Kami Tower, or I guess Dende Tower now, or the lookout, and this is where he senses all of the keys. Dende, Popo, Krillin, and then Goten and Trunks. They all look at him weirdly. Who are you? And why do you look like Goku? Goku? Bardock questions. Sorry, I don't know who Goku is, but I've heard that there are other Saiyans on this planet. Can you tell me where they are? Why would we do that? Goten and Trunks say as they both power up to Super Saiyan Blue and charge Bardock. Bardock is easily able to take both of them on in his base form. Come on guys, I mean you no harm, stop the fighting. After Goten and Trunks realized that Bardock was no threat, because all he was doing was defending against Goten and Trunks and not fighting back when he easily could have. So they reverted to his base form and told him, there is a Saiyan over there in that direction. He is training, his key should raise soon and you will know where to go. Thank you. Bardock flies off and is thinking to himself, that black haired Saiyan, I feel some connection with him. I don't know why, but... Bardock then senses a key raised in the northwest direction and heads there. Vegeta has just begun training with Bola when he notices Bardock land behind him. What? Who are you? Bardock thinks to himself, of course, Prince Vegeta. I guess my son didn't make it after all. Prince Vegeta probably just killed him. So this is the guy that surpassed the gods. Hey Vegeta, nice to see you again. Vegeta is shocked and Vegeta thinks to himself, why does he know my name and why does he look like Kakarot? Vegeta immediately powers up to Super Saiyan Blue and challenges the former God of Destruction. You are much stronger than the other Saiyans I faced, Bardock says. Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta is keeping up with base form Bardock, and Bardock then goes Super Saiyan to fight against Vegeta and has the huge upper hand. Vegeta then comes to the realization, I remember this Saiyan. When I was a child, he was well known for quickly climbing up the Saiyan ranks in power. He even surpassed my father. A low class Saiyan becoming that strong was unheard of. Then he remembered that Saiyan was the father of Raditz. This can only mean one thing. Are you the father of Raditz? Yes, he is my son. Shame. Raditz amounted to nothing and he was defeated by weaklings. He was scum. Vegeta powers up to Super Saiyan 4 Blue and is able to overpower the Super Saiyan Bardock. Bardock is surprised. Even though he's only a regular Super Saiyan, he hasn't been challenged like this in forever. He goes Super Saiyan Blue and Bardock has the massive upper hand. And then he decides to show off and he goes Super Saiyan White. Vegeta is shocked with this insane power of Super Saiyan White in the new transformation, and he's defeated with a single blow. Kakarot. He's hanging out with Beerus on his planet right now. I know you're looking for him, so go get him. Thanks, Vegeta. You sure have gotten strong. How did you get so strong? You surely died during Frieza's assault on planet Vegeta. How did you survive that? Well, Vegeta, that can be explained later. I am off to go see my son now. Also, by the way, Beerus and Whis were wished back to life after the whole Grand Priest thing. Bardock arrived on Beerus' planet and Goku was hanging with Beerus and Whis. Beerus is eating pudding, then his ears jiggle. Someone is here. I can hear it. Bardock then appears behind Beerus and grabs one of the puddings. Wow, this is delicious. How dare you? 
why I oughta, as Beerus lashes out towards Bardock and tries to hit him. Bardock quickly powers up to Super Saiyan and blocks the attack with one hand while eating his pudding with the other hand. Who are you? Goku, Beerus, and Whis are all shocked. Wow, Beerus, you don't live up to the expectations of your father, Barley. How do you know of my father? <laughs> hey, Whis, how's it going? Whis looks at him with a confused look. Answer my question, whatever your name is. My name is Bardock. I was the god destruction of this universe many years ago, and when I grew old, your father defeated me and took my place. I was then moved to universe 13, and I was then erased by Zeno. Your father was a great strong warrior, and you don't even compare to him. Have you just grown lazy? Well, Beerus is known to just eat and sleep for most of his life, Whis says and, and laughs at him. Bardock then looks over to a confused Goku. Why do I have this weird feeling about you, Goku says. Well, Kakarot, that is because I am your father. It's been many, many years since I have seen you. What? Wait, how could you be his father if you were erased many years ago and are just now back, Whis says. Well, when I took my stand against Frieza, I was teleported. Some sort of black hole or something. It took me back in time many millions of years ago. I started anew and eventually became a god of destruction. The strongest there ever was. Wow, cool, my dad is the strongest ever. Can we fight, dad? I want to see how strong you are. Uh, sure. Kakarot? No, call me Goku. Um, okay. Goku is very excited. So this is Super Saiyan. And this is Super Saiyan 2. And this is Super Saiyan... Hold on, son. I know these forms. I found them many years ago, so you don't need to show me. Just go to your full power, and we'll go from there and fight. Okay, Dad. Goku then goes Super Saiyan 4 Blue, and Bardock is surprised with his power. Wow, you are strong, son. No wonder you led Universe 7 to victory. Bardock then goes Super Saiyan Blue himself. He's able to take on his son with some sort of relative ease, but not completely. Wow, Dad, you sure are strong, but I have a trick up my sleeve. And Goku goes Kaioken times 20 on top of this, narrowing the playing field between the two, father and son. What is his technique? I'll show you later. Fight me now. The fight continues and Bardock is really proud of his son. But Bardock goes Super Saiyan White to finish the thing, and he goes for an attack. But Goku uses instant transmission and dodges it, surprising Bardock. But he does turn around and then finishes off Goku with ease. Wow, Kakarot. I, I mean, Goku, you are really strong. I can't believe that you're this strong. And then Goku says, I can't believe you're this strong, but how much of your power did you use against me? Uh, probably not even 10%. Wow, you could have been a huge help defeating the Grand Priest. Wait, what? Defeating the Grand Priest? Why would you do that? Well, Dad, I guess we have a lot to tell you. Meanwhile, Dende and Popo are just on the lookout, minding their own business, when all of a sudden, they are killed by a mysterious being, Perfect Cell. He smiles as he walks into the time chamber. Goten and Trunks had just got done eating breakfast with each other. Of course, they are Saiyan, so they eat a lot of food, and that's what they did. But then they fly up to the lookout to spend some time training in the time chamber. Not a whole day, but they spend a few minutes in there, which would equal a few days of actual training on the inside. And they walk into the time chamber, and they begin to train. They feel a weird presence inside of it, though. But they don't know what it is, so they just train like nothing's going on. After several hours of training, inside the chamber, so not a lot of time passing outside, Goten realizes they forgot to bring in their bags, so he goes out to get them. Be back in a few minutes, Trunks, just gonna grab the bags real quick. Goten goes to grab his bags when he notices a blood trail. He is confused and follows the trail, and he sees a dead Popo and a dead Dende. He immediately drops the bags back off and rushes back into the room of spirit and time. Trunks, Dende and Popo are dead. Somebody killed them. We need to tell everybody. Trunks looked over at Goten. He was shocked and immediately stopped his training as well. Now, now, hold on. Don't go telling everyone, Cell says as he lands between the two of them. I can't let you guys tell anyone that I am back or that people are dead. I'm not nearly strong enough to take on your fathers yet, but I am strong enough to kill you guys. Who are you and how long have you been in here? I am Cell. Has your fathers never told you about me? Hmm, what a shame. I've been training here for a month. And this is what they used to defeat me back in the day, many years ago. And I will use it against them, and I'll defeat them and kill them all. Goten and Trunks then power up to Super Saiyan Blue and begin to fight Perfect Cell. And they are both taking him on at the same time, and Trunks and Goten know how to fight together. When they do fight together, it is hard for the opponent to fight back. Cell is actually overpowered by the two, but it's a good fight overall, he still keeps up with them. He's stronger than both of them individually, but not when they fight together. This is when Perfect Cell actually powers up, and shows his full power, and it's a huge advantage over them. A month of Cell training in the time chamber 
has done him wonders in terms of power. We can't take him separately, Goten. We need to become one, Trunks says, and Goten and Trunks then do the fusion dance and become Gotenks, and then they go Super Saiyan Blue. What? Fusion? They're so strong. Far stronger than me. But if fusion makes two strong beings even stronger, then it must work the same for two dumb people fusing as well. Such fools. Cell uses instant transmission and lands right behind Gotenks before he even notices and plunges his tail into the back of Gotenks and begins to steal his power. Gotenks is getting smaller and losing muscles, and then he reverts to his base form and diffuses. The lifeless bodies of Goten and Trunks lay on the floor of the chamber with all the power sucked out of them. They are small and shriveled bodies. Cell looks down at himself and is amazed with his newfound power. He then begins to train even more. Two hours pass outside and Gohan is mad. Goten and Trunks were supposed to be done with training an hour ago. What on earth could they be doing? I better go check on them. Mom is going to be pissed. And then Gohan flies towards the lookout. That's weird, they left their bags out. They usually always take them in. Dende, Popo, do you guys know why Goten and Trunks are taking so long? And Gohan then sees the dead mangled bodies of Mr. Popo and Dende. What? Who did this? Who could do this? Was this Goten? Or Trunks? What the? Gohan then runs into the chamber, knowing that something is off. He walks in, and memories of training with his father preparing for Cell flood his brain. He then sees Cell training in the chamber. At first, Gohan thought it was a figment of his imagination, the memories of Cell becoming to life. But then, Cell stopped training and said, Well, hello, Gohan. I think we have a score to settle. And Gohan looked over the two dead bodies. They looked old and shriveled. This is when Gohan realized this was not a figment of his imagination anymore. Goten, Trunks, Cell, what did you do to them? Well, the boys were going to tell everyone about my return, and I couldn't just let that happen. Also, they were quite strong, so taking their powers, that was just a bonus for me. How could you, Cell? You were dead. How are you back? Well, actually, Gohan, it looks like some men devoted to Dr. Jiro had stumbled through his work and found me. After doing further research and finding out that I had been killed, they decided it was their duty to bring me back to life with the Dragon Balls. Such devoted men, such a shame I had to kill them. As Cell began to laugh, but you Gohan, how disappointed I am. You should be the strongest of all of your friends, but you grew lazy and irresponsible. Your Earth is now in trouble because you failed to train properly. I have been watching you. How pathetic that your little brother can attain the blue form, and yet you cannot. Gohan is so mad. His dead brother and friends start to piss him off so much, and he goes Super Saiyan 2, and he begins to fight Cell. Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is actually stronger than Blue Goten or Trunks, but weaker than Goten. He doesn't have the full God Key where he can go Blue, but he is so strong because he did train with God Tier characters for a while. The same form you killed me with. How pathetic it is now. Imagine if I had actually trained back then against you guys. You would have had no chance. Gohan is just getting thrown around by Cell, who had become insanely strong from his training, and absorption of Gotenks' powers. Gohan, I'm disappointed. I wanted to kill you, yes, but I wanted it to be fun. This will be quite boring, but oh well. You will see your brother soon. And just as Cell says that, Gohan explodes with rage and attains the Super Saiyan Rage form, the bridge between Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan Blue. At least, I think that's what it is. What is this power? As we know, the Super Saiyan Rage form is extremely strong, so Gohan is not going to be toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cell. Cell, you made the same mistake again. You didn't finish it when you could have. Even though you may be this perfect android, you will always have your downfalls. Cell, despite being mad, still has confidence in, in himself and doesn't seem to be in desperation, despite 2% rage and Gohan pummeling him. Perfect Cell stops and begins to laugh. Why are you laughing, Cell? Is it because your own demise is coming yet again? No, it's just you should know that I am a smart person. And if Saiyans can transform and I have Saiyan genes, I should be able to transform too. So I look into this. Well, it turns out I couldn't go Super Saiyan like you. But somebody else that I had the DNA of can transform. And then Cell goes golden. Frieza's race seems to have further forms of power, what do you think, Gohan? Gohan is shocked with this power. Remember, Golden Cell never happened in this timeline. Golden Cell just starts throwing Super Saiyan Rage Gohan around like he is nothing, and Gohan can't even touch him. And Cell is doing this without using any effort whatsoever. I need to tell the others. Gohan screams as he rushes towards the exit. But before he can reach it, Cell grabs him from behind and is holding him by his head. You will not tell everybody else. I will do that myself. 
and Cell shoots out dozens of Cell Juniors from his tail. My children, go out and wreak havoc. Kill anyone in sight, but most importantly, have fun doing it. The Cell Juniors leave the room, and Gohan is in agony watching them leave. He knows the damage that they can do. Eventually your father and your other friends will find me in here, and you I guess too, but by then it will likely be too late as I would have had way too much time to train. For now, you are my prisoner, and you will wish you were dead. Cell had two Cell Juniors hold Gohan down, grabbing both of his arms, and Cell would punch him in the gut or in his face repeatedly, torturing Gohan. At one point, Cell even absorbed the powers of Gohan's legs, making them shrivel and become tiny. He couldn't walk anymore. With several hours passing on the outside, Vegeta had finally defeated the many Cell Juniors that killed millions of innocent people, and Majub helped as well, along with Tien, Krillin, 18, and many others. Goku and Bardock got word of this, and they all rushed back to Earth and saw the chaos of what happened. Juniors, huh? How? Any sight of Cell? No Kakarot. Nowhere. Can't even sense his key or anything. Well, maybe Dende can see him somewhere on here. Let's go ask him. Goku, Bardock, Vegeta, and Majub arrive on the lookout and can't seem to find Dende. Where could he be? Then, they all saw it. The dead body, the mangled remains. Cell was here. Then they looked over at the Room of Spirit and Time and saw a trail of blood lead to the room, with Goten and Trunks' bags sitting right outside of it. Goku and Vegeta were worried and pissed because their sons must be in danger. So Goku and his friends had just entered the chamber. Well, 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 son Goku. Been so long since we last talked. Vegeta's still second fiddle to Goku, aren't you? Vegeta looked at Cell with a grunt. And Bardock, father of Goku, and strongest fighter to ever exist. And this guy here, Oob, the reincarnation of Majin Buu. How do you know of all of this, Cell? I have my sources, of course, son Goku. But that doesn't matter. I have now become far too strong for any of you to defeat me. Stay back, Goku. I will finally defeat Cell, and I won't make the same mistake that I did years ago. I will kill him right away. Vegeta immediately transformed it into a Super Saiyan 4 Blue and went to take on Perfect Cell immediately. Cell went golden and went to take on Vegeta. The two were fighting and seemed on par, but Vegeta definitely had the upper hand in the fight. Despite all of Perfect Cell's training, it seemed all for naught as he was likely going to be defeated by Vegeta, and he even knew that Bardock was much stronger than Vegeta, so he really had no chance. But Cell had a plan B for this scenario. Cell then created hundreds of Cell Juniors. He ordered all of them to attack, and he began to retreat further into the time chamber, where he could continue his training on the run and become strong enough to overpower them in the future. It took several minutes for them to take on the Golden Cell Juniors and defeat them, and they end up killing them all. Or, they think they killed them all. By the time they had defeated them, Cell was too far gone. He was so far away they couldn't even sense his key anymore. Bardock then was going to leave the chamber to tell the others that Cell was back then they would be in the time chamber a while, waiting for him to return, and also looking for him. Just as Bardock exits the room of spirit and time, a last Cell Jr. destroys the door, and Goku, Bardock, and Majub wouldn't know how Gotenks or Buu escaped the room of spirit and time back during the Buu saga, so they felt like they would have to stay in until it was fixed by Dende. But this is perfect for Cell. He would not have to deal with Bardock. Perfect Cell had begun to continue his training, and Bardock was pissed, because first off, Dende was not there to fix the door because he was dead, so he couldn't go and help them, even though he knew he could defeat Cell pretty easily himself. He sat there and waited to see if anything was going to happen. After several hours passed, Bardock grew impatient, and with several hours passing, that means several months have passed inside of the, of the room of spear in time, and Bardock could not foresee what was going to happen, but he would then go and find help from Goku's friends and family. After they told him, they discussed that he would need to go to New Namek to use the Dragon Balls to wish Dende back to life, so that the Earth Dragon Balls would also return as well, and then Dende could fix the door. By the time Bardock had reached Namek and wished Dende back to life, 12 hours had passed since he left the chamber, meaning 6 months had passed inside the Room of Spirit and Time for Goku, Vegeta, Majub, and Bardock, and Gohan as well. It is good that you are back, Dende, so that you can fix this entrance. How long until you can fix it? Are you sure we should even open it? Cell is a very dangerous person, and he will be trapped in there. How dare you even suggest that, Dende? This is Goku we're talking about. How many times has he saved this godforsaken planet? Fine, Bardock. I will rebuild the door. Just know that it takes a month to properly fix it. As if I don't make it properly, 
it could completely erase the dimension they are currently in, and they would be gone forever. A month? A month? That's 30 years on the inside. Yes, it's unfortunate, but it is the only way to fix it. Meanwhile, on the inside, Majub had healed Gohan and everybody else to get their energy completely at 100%. He even revived Goten and Trunks, who they weren't really dead at the time, but their bodies were just so old and so shriveled up that people thought they were dead, but when Majub healed them, they went back to normal and, of course, got a Zenkai boost from it. They all started training together while also trying to find Perfect Cell on their journey to defeat the villain once and for all. Perfect Cell would finally return though, and then the real fight would begin. Meanwhile on the outside, Bardock spent the entire 30 days sitting outside of the chamber, meditating, waiting for Dende to finish fixing the entrance to the room of spirit and time. For 30 days, Bardock's eyes did not open. The second that Dende had finished the entrance, Bardock opened his eyes. He stood up and was ready to see what was going on inside of the room of spirit and time. He walked towards it, ready for anything. Before he reached the entrance, a figure emerged from the chamber, sprinting. It was an old man with terror in his eyes. Goku? This isn't Kakarot. This is my grandson, Goten. Where is everybody else? Dead. They're all dead. Cell's a monster. He can't be defeated. We must close the door at once. If we keep the door open, then we will never... And before the now old Goten can finish his sentence, a tail emerges from the entrance and wraps around his neck, pulling him back into the room of spirit and time. Bardock rushes in. When he re-emerges into the room of spirit and time, he sees the man he once saw, except now shriveled and dead. Goten was of course an old man because 30 years passed while Bardock was waiting for the door to be opened, and Cell had just absorbed his energy after pulling him back in. Bardock saw the bodies of Trunks and Gohan, but he didn't see the bodies of anyone else like Goku, Vegeta, or Majub, and that really made Bardock suspicious. Were they still fighting, or did Cell absorb them in a different way? Bardock continued walking into the room of spirit and time, looking around and trying to see if he can find where Cell is. Bardock wants vengeance on the man who killed his grandsons. Bardock has now ventured far into the realm of the chamber, and finally he met face to face with Cell. Where are Kakarot and Vegeta? <laughs> well maybe you should ask where Majub is too. I absorbed Majub, and this gave me the powers of the legendary Majin Buu. I then absorbed Vegeta, and your son, and now I'm unstoppable. I will take control of this universe. I can't let that happen. Too late. And Cell puts his finger up to his forehead and sends his Goten's near lifeless body right next to the chamber entrance. Perfect Cell teleports right next to him using instant transmission and then walks out of the room of spirit and time. Bardock then transforms into Super Saiyan White and rushes for the door. But right before he leaves and is able to exit the room, Cell has destroyed the chamber door from the outside. Bardock is stuck and he is trapped. After three years pass inside, he realizes what Cell is probably doing, getting stronger, absorbing everyone. He probably even absorbed Beerus by now, and he likely rules the universe, or at least the planet. All of Goku's friends and family are probably now dead. He wondered if anyone would ever fix the door. Thousands of years pass for Bardock as the door remains sealed shut, and on the outside, Cell has become the ruler of the universe. He didn't destroy the Earth because he wanted to see its people suffer. Nearly 30 years have passed outside the room of spirit and time. A young brother and sister were wandering around the Earth. They were in their mid-teens and they loved adventure as it was the only fun thing to do in Cell's hellhole called Earth. It was the only thing that they could do in their bleak lives. They would eventually wander among something amazing to their own eyes. This used to be the tower that went beyond even the clouds. Yes, Maya. This tower was destroyed back when Cell came to power. I don't know why he destroyed something of such beauty. Mom said boys from the village used to try to climb the tower years ago. Nobody could ever reach the top. She did hear of one boy, though, who made it to the top, but that was before her time. Wow, Luke. I wish we could have seen what it was like. Why are there so many beans here? I don't know. That's odd. That must have been just what they ate. I don't know. Wow, Luke. What's this? It says it's called the Room of Spirit and Time. While in here, a day passes on the outside, but an entire year passes inside this room. Wow, that's amazing. We should go in. Maya, no, this is dangerous. We, we don't know what's in there. Come on, life sucks anyways. If we do die, then so be it. Ugh. 
Let's do it. Maya and Luke put the pieces of the entrance back together and the chamber was ready to be opened. Luke and Maya then continued their adventure and walked into the room of spirit and time. Inside was a now very old Bardock. He was meditating. He has been meditating for decades in there now. The second that Luke and Maya appeared in the chamber, he flinched and his eyes opened. Finally, somebody fixed the door. Somebody opened it and somebody walked in. But who were the two to open it? And who were the ones that proved Bardock's foresight to be right once again? Luke and Maya, after entering the chamber, immediately fell to the ground. The 10 times gravity was very hard on them and they could barely move. It was even hard for them to breathe in the chamber as it had very bad air. And Bardock notices him struggling and breaks his meditation and goes to help them. Why is it so hard to walk in here? I knew we should never have came in here. Hello, what are your names? Luke and Maya would look up to intimidating old man Bardock. Mom said never to talk to strangers. Mom also said to stop going out on adventures, but she is right, we can't move and the scary guy is closing in on us. My name is Bardock. I have not seen another person in over 10,000 years. I have been trapped in here for a long time. Thank you for opening the door and now giving me company. Now I understand that gravity is hard for you, but take some of my energy, it will make you strong enough temporarily to handle the gravity. Bardock then put out his hand, and an aura surrounded Luke and Maya. Now they could stand up without feeling much different than being out in their normal world. My name is Maya, as she reaches her hand out and grabs Bardock, shaking it. I am Luke, we're brothers and sisters. Ah, nice, going out on dangerous adventures together reminds me of my childhood, back when I was a warrior. I, I killed innocent people though, so I hope you're not like me in that aspect. Both Luke and Maya started to walk back further away from Bardock, scared of what he just said. Don't be afraid, that was me a long time ago. I know my actions were wrong. If I wanted to hurt you, I would have done it already. Please tell me about the earth as of now. If you guys came in, then that must mean Cell didn't destroy the earth like he claimed he would. You have been in here for so long, how do you know of Cell? Who do you think trapped me in here? Cell trapped you in here? Yes, he did. And my friends and my family tried to fight him, but they all perished. Wow, you took a stand against THE Cell? Well, technically, I never got to fight him, but my friends sure did. Too bad Son Goku wasn't around to take on Cell. I know for a fact he would have defeated him. That guy has saved Earth so many times. I mean, he was a Super Saiyan, the legendary Super Saiyan. He even saved our universe in a tournament. People make murals of him now, and they spread the legend of the Super Saiyans. It's talked around like campfires and such. Yes, Kak, or Goku. He was a person of high character and even higher power. He loved to fight and he loved to protect Earth. Unfortunately, Bardock then thought to himself what happened. He just disappeared. How did you know him? Did you know him well? I wish I knew him more, knew him longer, but unfortunately that wasn't what was in store for me. Wait, so, he trapped you in here. Not to torture you, but because he fears you, right? You look like Goku. Why? Heh, <laughs> yes. At the time, I could have defeated Cell in a fight pretty easily. Well, now that we know that, why don't, why don't you just go kill Cell now, now that you're free to leave? Everyone would be free, and you would look, be looked at as the hero of the universe. No. Maya looked upset with the way that Bardock responded. Sorry. It's just, I've grown old and weak since I've been trapped in here. Meanwhile, Cell has been likely growing stronger, much stronger in the meantime. It's pointless for me to fight him now. But Bardock, we all need your help. The universe needs your help. God damn it, Maya. I said no. Maya then begins to erupt in tears as he rushes towards the exit. Wait, that doesn't mean that I can't help. I'm a natural warrior. I know how to fight. I know how to teach. I will teach you how to defeat Cell. Sorry, Bardock. We can't. We're not strong. We can't defeat him no matter what you teach us. You misguided child. You seek adventure, but are missing out on the greatest adventure of your life. The opportunity to defeat the greatest threat in the universe. The opportunity to be trained. The opportunity to be trained by a Super Saiyan. Bardock then yells and transform into a Super Saiyan form. Luke and Maya look at Bardock with amazement. They had seen the murals of these Super Saiyans, the fighters who could change the color of their hair and their power. Wow, Luke, this is what we've been dreaming about. We just met a Super Saiyan and he wants to train us. We have to. But mother, sorry kid, but mom's not always right. You can give your mother a better life if you defeat Cell. Fine, I will let you train me. I'm gonna train you guys for two months, since it only take a few hours passing outside. We will focus on your key control, flight, basic key techniques, and basic fighting abilities. Two months pass, and Luke and Maya are sparring against each other with Bardock watching. 
They are now flying around, and the gravity is nothing to them. Luke ends up defeating his sister Maya, but it is a good fight, and it gives Bardock the ability to tell them what they need to improve on. Luke, you are relying far too much on your power. You need to focus more on your technique and controlling your key. In a real fight, you may defeat it because your stamina will drain faster. In Maya, you need to work on increasing your power. You have speed and a good fighting technique, but you still have to be strong enough to make your attacks hurt. Both Luke and Maya nodded their heads at Bardock. Okay, so it's been two months, it's time for you guys to head home. It was great to meet you guys and all the hope in the world is instilled in you. Remember, keep your key at a low level so that Cell does not sense your power. Luke and Maya then leave the chamber and head home. The next day, Luke and Maya return to Bardock. We skipped school today so we can train for 12 hours. Oh, so you get 6 months with me. Well that's good. A lot of time to progress. Over the six months, Bardock teaches them more advanced techniques and fighting styles, while also having them increase their powers. Luke and Maya kept coming back to Bardock until the point where they have already spent three years of training with Bardock, becoming fine young fighters themselves. After finishing a training session, Luke demands from Bardock. All of this time, and you have not even begun to teach us how to go Super Saiyan ourselves. That's something I can't teach you. Why? Why won't you teach us? Bardock looked down. He didn't want to tell them that he would never be able to achieve Super Saiyan because he's a human. Tell me now, I need to go Super Saiyan so that I can defeat Cell. Without it, he'll defeat me. He'll defeat us. He'll defeat everybody. I'm sorry, but I can't teach you. Oh, shut up, old man. This is all for naught. You were just keeping us around because you were such a lonely old man, and you just want us here so that you are not alone. We really have no chance, don't we? Luke, calm down. You need to understand why I can't teach you. No, you teach it to me now or I'm done and I'll lock you up in here again. Luke, I have something special for you. Something better than the Super Saiyan form. Take these earrings, the both of you. Put one of each on you and you will know when to do it when the time is right. I don't want your stupid earrings. As Luke smacks them out of Bardock's hands, he then runs out of the time chamber. And Maya looks at Bardock scared. And as she walks out, she picks up the earrings that Bardock had gifted them. She smiled at Bardock as she walked out the door and Luke felt bad, and was ready to apologize to Bardock the next day during training. Luke and Maya showed up to the time chamber together, only to see the room of spirit and time destroyed, smoke emitting from its ruins. They rushed towards it, even though they put the door back together, it led to nothing. No, Bardock, he was our only hope. Maya burst into tears, and Luke was comforting her. Luke was filled with regret as to what his last words were to Bardock. Now how are we supposed to defeat Cell? I don't know. Just as Luke and Maya were leaving the rubble, they saw a Cell Junior hovering over them. Oh no, it's number 212, the leader of our region, Luke, Maya, it seems you've been committing highly illegal acts. It has been seen that you have entered this sacred area. What did you see inside of that room? Who did you see? They didn't even answer. They just rushed towards number 212 and began to fight him. Even with all their training, they still couldn't defeat him. Bardock had to put these on whenever the moment was right. I think we need to do it now. Maya hands one earring to Luke, and he puts it on. All of a sudden, they fuse together, and out comes Mook. Mook is so powerful that he effortlessly defeats number 212. In the aftermath of the fight, and after they defuse, Luke and Maya are ready to die, since many more Cell Juniors will likely be rushed to the area. Until, all of a sudden, an old man flying on a cloud landed next to them. You two get on now before they arrive. Luke and Maya jump on the Nimbus Cloud and fly away to escape punishment. Meanwhile, another familiar old man is walking through a village far away from the events of Luke and Maya's battle, but he sensed the outcome of it, so he knew what happened. A Cell Junior confronts this old man, saying that when he walks through these streets, he needs to pay his respects. Then the old man looks up, and just with his glare, the Cell Junior blows up to bits and pieces and dies. So now we get to finally see Luke and Maya meeting Master Roshi. My my my, I never thought I would see fighters strong enough to take on the Cell Juniors. All of the fighters I knew were killed long ago. We are strong links to our master, Master Bardock. Bardock, huh? That name sounds familiar. Well, I can teach you two many things. How are we going to train? Won't they be able to sense our key? Ah, yes. But thanks to Bulma here, she has built an energy shield that can actually conceal our key in this area only, and as long as you don't use too much power, then we can train freely. Wow, the Bulma, she built this? Yeah, long ago. I have no idea what she's up to now, but last I heard she went underground to develop some super weapon to defeat Cell. She is desperate to get her Vegeta back. 
But a mere human invention doesn't have a chance against Cell, right? I see what you're saying, Luke, but never doubt Bulma. Never ever. She's done amazing things. Anyways, time to start training. First, I will teach you the legendary Kamehameha. Master Roshi begins to initiate his new students into his training regimen. While Bardock's training was more focused on sheer power and basic fighting techniques, Roshi will provide Maya with amazing techniques and will drastically increase their martial arts fighting skills. Luke and Maya trained hard every single day with Roshi. Master Roshi, did you ever see Son Goku fight? Did I ever? I saw that man fight many, many times. In fact, I'm the one who trained him. He was a little rascal at first, but he really did grow into a fine young man and, and warrior. He saved the earth many times over. What? No way. You taught Goku? Tell us some stories, please. Okay, it's time to take a break anyways. I will tell you at the time that Goku fought even a god. His name was Beerus. Luke and Maya looked intently at Roshi as he told them the story of the Super Saiyan God, how Goku and Vegeta teamed up and fought against a God of Destruction. Dispo, we have hundreds of juniors heading to planet Ryu. Okay, I'm heading for them. I can only hold on for so long. When will backup arrive? Vion and Zore will be there in ETA 7 minutes, so 3 minutes after you. Can you hold them for that long? I will die trying if I have to. Dispo then lands on planet Ryu just seconds before the Cell Juniors arrive to lay siege on the planet and enslave the population. The Pride Trooper quickly powers up and rushes towards the Juniors. Dispo could take out some of the weaker Juniors, but the stronger ones he had to use his quickness to dodge and evade until Backup arrived. As Dispo had just begun to make a dent into the invading Juniors, Backup then finally did come. Got your back, Dispo. Glad you guys showed up. Let's finish these guys. Dispo, Vion, and Zare were able to work together and defeat the Juniors. Hundreds of them lay dead on the ground. Thirty years we've been fighting this war, Dispo. How long can we keep doing this? We must continue. Jiren and Topo didn't give their lives thirty years ago just for us to give up. We must keep fighting. There is always a way. Dispo then had his flashback to over thirty years ago when Cell and his juniors first attacked the planets the Pride Troopers had under their protection. Jiren led the Pride Troopers into battle. Many died, but it seemed they had fought back and defeated the army. But then... Golden Cell himself challenged Jiren. Jiren had no chance, and that is when the former God of Destruction, Topo, had came in as well. Topo's Akai would not even work against Cell, and the duo still couldn't defeat him. This led to former Supreme Kai of Universe 11 handing the Patora earrings to them. The legendary fusion then became Jopo. He was able to defeat Golden Cell, giving it his all and using the ultimate attack that killed Cell, but also killed them. It actually didn't really kill Cell, but it would take him many years to regenerate from that attack. His army of juniors would actually lead on and carry the torch while he kept regenerating. Without Jiren and Topo, Dispo would become the leader of the Pride Troopers, but without them, they were at a huge disadvantage. Dispo had fallen out of his splashback to look over and see his comrades yelling. Full groans, three of them heading straight for us. Dispo looked up in shock. He knew that his final moments might have been upon him. So full growns are Cell Juniors who have fully grown up. They are far more powerful than the Juniors, but they're not as powerful as Cell himself. You guys, get back to base. I will take them on myself. I will have to use my full power for the final time. Dispo, no. Let us help. Leave now. That is an order. His fellow troopers left just in time as the full growns landed right next to Dispo. Dispo could take on a full grown, but there were three of them, and Dispo still hadn't recovered yet from his fight against the many juniors he had taken down. Well hello there, Dispo. As leader of the Pride Troopers, you are responsible for the slaughter of my brethren. Revenge will be taken upon you. The Pride Troopers will always move on. If a leader dies, a new one will always take its place. Dispo would then power up to his full power. He would need to give more than his all to defeat the three full grounds, which would lead to his death from overexertion. The fight began, and he showed why he was the leader of the legendary superhero team. Despite being outnumbered, he used his top end speed to dodge attacks, and the full groans would actually even accidentally hit each other. When Dispo finally would find the right moment to strike, it would be a very precise hit, really disrupting the full groans. Dispo had actually underestimated himself, and he was actually winning the fight. Stop the fight now, you three. The full groans stopped immediately, and then Dispo looked over. I will kill him now. This was another full groan, but he looked bigger, stronger and his skin had turned into a more green shade, unlike the other full growns that are blue. He was further along the evolution to be an identical clone to the real Cell. This is something that Dispo had never seen before. The Pride Troopers will finally die. I have hundreds of juniors heading to each planet, 
that you guys protect. We have finally defeated you, just in time before our leader will be fully regenerated. Dispo looked down in shame. He would be the one at fault for their defeat. Just two hits, and Dispo is already on the ground, unable to move. He looked up. The full grown put his hand over his head, ready to finish him off. Then, in an instant, Dispo was moved several feet back and looked up to see the Cell Clone's face masked in pain, as Hit had just initiated his assassination technique on him. Hit looked over at the three lesser full growns, and time stopped, and once it continued, the full growns fell to their deaths. Hit. I remember you from the Tournament of Power. Thank you so much for saving me. A spacecraft then hovered above them. Two people jumped out of it. It was Kale and Kaba. Pleasure to meet you. I am Kaba, leader of the Sadala Defense Force. If you don't remember me, I was in the Tournament of Power as well. I was surprised that there was another group in this universe waging war on the Juniors. And luckily we had intel of their plans to defeat you guys. We couldn't let that happen. And we need an ally these days. I have hundreds of soldiers heading to each of your planets to help defend them. Gather your troopers, and we will fend these people off together. Quickly, get in the ship, and let's go. Kaba had spent many years fighting the juniors, and had become really strong due to being a Universe 6 Saiyan and the constant Zenkais he had gotten. Through their struggles, Kaba would achieve the Super Saiyan form, with many other Saiyans would achieve it as well, making them a very strong army of soldiers. On one of the planets, Kale was watching some full growns kill innocent people, which reminded her of a bad memory. When Khalifa was killed by a junior many years ago, and Kale watched it, she transformed to a Super Saiyan Berserk and ripped the full growns apart, similar to how Super Saiyan 2 Gohan did against the Cell Juniors. With the Pride Troopers alongside the Sadal Defense Force, they would be the victors stopping the Juniors' invasion, but they knew it wouldn't be the end. With the new alliance, this means that potentially, the Cell Menace could one day be defeated, but their true hope lied with two human siblings on planet Earth. Wow, Master Roshi, Goku really gave Cell Sensu Beans when they first fought? What an idiot. But wow, Gohan ended up defeating Cell himself? What a badass. Too bad he became too much of a wussy. Or maybe Cell would have been defeated in the first place. Learn from the mistake of Gohan, you two. No matter how strong you get, that doesn't mean you abandon training. If Gohan had actually continued his training, then he truly would be the strongest, and we would not be in this situation. But still, not all the blame should be, should be put on him. Anyways, you guys have vastly improved, taking all the techniques I know and mastering them in such short time. Unfortunately, this is all that I can do for you. But Master Roshi, we can't defeat Cell at this point. We just are not strong enough. Fear not. There is still much more to learn, just not from me. Head over to Bulma, and she'll have a spaceship ready for you. It'll take you somewhere, where you will meet a man named King Kai where he will teach you some very important lessons and techniques. Dispo and Topo, and other Pride Troopers and Saiyans were meeting at a table. We need more fighters if we wish to defeat them. We need to beat them before Cell is fully regenerated. If he gets back to 100%, we can't defeat him, we can't do anything. One of my scouts went to a planet called Earth, yes, Goku's old planet, and he found a dojo hidden in the mountains. There's a very strong master, and he's teaching his disciples they may not be as strong as our fighters, but the way they fight, it's unbelievable. They're masters of their craft. They would make a great ally. We see a Universe 6 Saiyan scout looking over the mountains and seeing the dojo. He sees the thousands of bald men training. They have so much men. Kava, we must get them on our side. The scout relayed this over a radio. He then moved in for a closer look, and then all of a sudden, he heard someone behind him say, What do you think you are doing? The scout turned around and saw a tall, muscular human behind him. I promise, I'm not spying. We're here for an alliance. Shut it. I've been watching you for a while. You're using that radio telling people about us, huh? No, I promise. The man came out of the shadows and yelled, Bang fist! A Yamcha's punch knocked him off the mountain and he landed right in the middle of the training grounds. TN students surrounded him and put all their hands in a triangle, preparing to use a deadly attack on him. Wait, please, I'm here looking for an alliance against the juniors. Don't trust him. He's been spying on us for days. If he really wanted our help, he would have asked nicely. The students were about to use the tri-beam cannon until Tien stepped in. Stop. We must not kill him. Yet. You come here in need of an alliance? Who are you, and who do you represent? My name is Lettuce. I may say informally of Universe 6. We've been fighting the juniors for many years, and we came across very important information. Cell is regenerating. Soon he'll be fully healed, and he'll be stronger than before. 
We just joined forces with the Pride Troopers so that we can take a final stand and stop Cell. If he comes back, we're all done for. We found your dojo here, and you have many capable men. We need your help. The universe, or perhaps even the multiverse, is at stake. And how can we trust you? Well, if we really wanted to kill you, we would. We have more men than you, and overall we are stronger than you, but we still truly we do need your help. Tian then looked up and pondered over the information. Students, teachers, masters, I started this dojo many, many years ago, even before Cell returned. We have grown strong, many, many members. Now is the time. Now is the time to stop hiding in the mountains. Since you are my students and not my slaves, only those of you who wish to join the fight may be allowed to fight, and those of you of high enough rank as well. Raise your hand if you wish to join the Alliance and fight the juniors. Thousands of hands raised. Every single student, teacher, and master of Tian's dojo raised their hand, even Yamcha. They all knew full well risking their lives was worth saving the universe. Lettuce smiled. He had hoped that his alliance would destroy the juniors. So now we see Luke and Maya. They had just arrived on Snake Way, and they were on their way to train with King Kai. And since these guys were much faster than Goku was when he first met King Kai, they were able to fly over Snake Way and very, very quickly get to King Kai's planet. And when they got there, King Kai was waiting for them. I've been expecting you. Hey, my name is Luke, and her name is... Oh, come on. I know your names. You don't need to tell me. I've been watching you for a while now. I've seen what you've been through. Now it's my turn to train you. King Kai would teach them two very important techniques to the siblings. The Kaioken and the Genki Dama, otherwise known as the Spirit Bomb. The two siblings were naturals. In just mere weeks, they had got down both the techniques and started to master them. Luke could use up to Kaioken times 10, and Maya could use Kaioken times 5. Wow, Luke, you really get the hang of it. Can you please give me some tips? Yes, just don't stop working and you'll get it, sis. Just keep working harder. That night, while Luke had gone to sleep right after the dinner, Maya went outside and trained even more. This became a new routine for her, to take half of her sleep time to train extra hard. After a few months, their training was done. Wow, you two have potential. A big battle is coming. You must take part in it. But first, you need to find these ancient wristbands. When you guys put it on, you immediately get tens of times stronger. If you each wear one in the battle, it should be a victory for you guys. Here are the coordinates of that planet, and good luck. Luke and Maya got in their ship and traveled towards this planet. Ancient golden wristbands, huh? Isn't that a little bit cheap? I mean, it's a power we didn't even work for. Oh well, there are more important things than fairness right now, Maya. Anyways, this is the planet here, let's go. Luke and Maya landed on the planet and went to where the wristbands were located, inside of an old temple. This place really gives me the creeps. I wonder how long it's been abandoned. Look at that statue. It has the, the golden wristbands on it. Luke and Maya walked to the statue. Man, this dude is huge. He looks like a Saiyan, too. Yeah, I wonder who he was. They then removed the wristbands from the statues, and Maya put one on her wrist. Wow, this really does make you a lot stronger. Before Luke could put on his bracelet, the statue started moving. What the hell? What the hell's going on? The statue just moved. The cement coat surrounding the figure shattered and out came an alive, legendary Super Saiyan Broly. What? The blonde hair? This guy's a Super Saiyan. Hey there, man. There's a big battle going on soon. You should join us. Akarot! Broly yells and then rushes towards them with a punch. Luke blocks it effortlessly and then knocks him out in a single punch. Just to show how strong these guys are, these two siblings are, even without the wristbands on. Wow, we are stronger than Super Saiyans. L well, let's go. Luke and Maya then head off where the Universe 6 Saiyans, the Pride Troopers, and Tien's army were all gathering up. Tien, Kaba, and Dispo look towards the spaceship that was heading towards them. Wow, two very strong keys in that ship. Stronger than everyone else here. Luke and Maya then landed their ship and got out of it. Everyone was surprised when it was just two kids that had the key. Well, hello there, kids. I was told that you would be coming. We have a plan to weaken Cell before he is fully regenerated. I created this here device. We tested it on many different juniors who had absorbed people. This device can be used to get rid of everything that Cell had absorbed as well. We need to use this so that we can get Goku, Vegeta, and Oob out of Cell. Wait, Goku's inside of Cell? As far as we can tell, yes, and this device should be enough to get it out of him. You two are the strongest here, so shall be entrusted in you guys to use it. You will just have to weaken his stomach enough so you can stab this into him. It will eject him with a special poison made from his own DNA that will cause his body to react by flushing the three of them out of his system. So, we will have to fight Cell? Of course you will, but don't worry. You have an entire army that has your backup, 
and Cell is very weak right now. And every single soldier is supplied with their own Sensu Bean, and we have dozens of Namekian healers scattered across multiple units. You should be fine. Luke, these are the same beans that we saw back when we first met Bardock. That is where they must have been from. Everyone, gather up. Into formation. The attack is commencing soon. Luke, Maya, you two will be dropped off at Cell's residence. It is heavily protected by both juniors and fullgrowns. You should be fine though, you will have each other's back. Plus, many of the juniors and fullgrowns will need to leave to assist where we are attacking them from. Everyone, this is the fate of the universe. It is on all our backs. Let's get it done. Leave everything out there on the battlefield. Don't hold anything back. As the warriors go out to start the battle, Luke and Maya are picked up by a ship that is supposed to take them to the cell's lair. They get on and they are dropped off a few miles away from it. They begin their trek through. They easily fight off Cell Juniors, Full Groans, and this shows all the things they have learned. They use Kaioken for split seconds, they use the Kamehameha, and all the martial arts moves they learned led them to the easy path to Cell's lair. Well, 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 the two of you are quite strong, but still, you are no match for me. You will be easily killed by me, even though I'm not in my full state. Cell then got up and powered up. His key was strong, and this is when Luke and Maya both went Kaioken times 20 and they took on the villain. The two of them were putting up a valiant effort, but Cell was just toying with them. Even while not 100% regeneration, and not even in golden form, because he can't use it until he is fully healed, he can still defeat the two children. This is where Luke and Maya look at each other, and both know they have to put on the Patora earring. Just as they are, Cell uses instant transmission, and snags the Patoras from them. Ah, these are the same earrings that were used to defeat me years ago. Like I would be dumb enough to let that happen once again. Cell then crushes the earrings in his hands. No! Luke and Maya both screamed. It seemed as if their hope was all lost. Luke looked over at Maya, who looked confident. She then stood up and took a few steps towards Cell. Maya, wait, no. Maya then yelled, Kaioken times 50. And Luke was shocked. Luke himself couldn't go Kaioken times 40 without collapsing. And she was thriving within a times 50. Maya, you are truly stronger than me now. Your training paid off. Here, take my bracelet. You deserve it more than me right now, and you can defeat this bastard with it. He handed the ancient wristband to her, and she put it on her wrist. Her power immediately multiplied again, and she pulled out the, the device that Bulma had created, and she ran towards Cell. Her punch to Cell's stomach completely messed him up. Blood gushed from his mouth, and with her other hand, she emitted a strong key blast which further caused Cell damage, and she finished it off with stabbing the device into Cell's stomach. He started throwing up, he started flying around, and then Goku, Vegeta, and Majub just came out of, out of Cell's body as he threw them up. Cell's power dropped suddenly. Wow, it's Son Goku. Maya, finish Cell off now before he becomes fully regenerated. But it was too late. Cell's body completely emerged together, and his power increased. He then went golden. Now I may have lost their powers, but I'm still more than strong enough to defeat you now. You are dead. Cell then started walking towards them. So, we have a score to settle. And behind Cell, out came Old Man Bardock, walking towards him. Cell, your time is now up. You ran away from me many years ago. You were too weak then. I know you are stronger now, or were stronger, until you lost my son and his friends. But still, I won't let you get away. What? Bardock is Goku's father? Oh Bardock, how much of a joy it was stealing your son's energy and killing your grandsons. As you may know, it was your grandson that had originally defeated me many years ago. Now I have stolen his power and used it to wreak havoc on the universe. How ironic. I will kill you. Cell immediately powers up into his golden form, and then Bardock goes Super Saiyan White. This fight would be of epic proportions, a former god destruction versus a Cell that has been insanely powerful their punches digging deeply into each other. Key Blasts are shaking the universe around them. Everyone watched in awe with the Saiyan Army, Tien's Dojo, and Pride Army all are watching it. Nearly all the juniors had been dispatched of by the armies, but the ones that were alive were watching their creator in battle for the first time in a while. Bardock was weaker, just like Cell. He was very old. Had he been, had he been back in his prime when he was a god of destruction, he could have easily defeated Cell in a single hit without even using Master Ultra Instinct. Bardock's muscles tightened, his bones were trembling. This fight in space reminded him of his first taking on Frieza so long ago. Master Bardock is insanely powerful. That old geezer can really fight, 
No wonder why Son Goku is so strong. He just inherited his father's powers. Goku, Vegeta, and Majub still lay unconscious, as in the last part, Cell had spit them out because of how hard Maya had hit him. Both Luke and Maya were surrounding their bodies, looking at them. Maya imagined the many adventures and many fights they had endured. They couldn't help but wonder if they would soon awake to join the battle with Cell. Bardock was struggling. Even his mastered Ultra Instinct form could only do so much against Jiro's perfect creation. Cell had become far stronger than Jiro had ever thought any of his cre creations would ever reach. Cell kept fighting away. Whenever Bardock got a successful hit, Cell would counter back with a devastating blow. Bardock's key was deteriorating quickly. He was getting too old and couldn't take it anymore. With a kick, Cell broke Bardock's arm and Bardock was reverted to Super Saiyan 4 Blue, a weaker form than Mastered Ultra Instinct. With just one arm and being reverted to a lesser form, he had no chance and brought his last trump card. I have been saving this for you for years, Cell. Bardock put up his good hand, opened his palm, and faced it towards him. Final Hakai, and a huge purple key blast emitted and headed towards Cell. He looked at it with shock. Immediately he tried to use instant transmission, but he didn't think fast enough. Just as he had used it to teleport, the destruction energy had taken course and taken over half of Cell's body. Well, I missed partially, but even if you can regenerate, you should not be able to regenerate from that. You vastly underestimate me, Bardock, as Cell's lower body slowly regenerated. Interesting, my legs are green showing that I can't use the golden form with them just yet, but I won't need my legs to finish everyone else off. But as for you, that was all of your energy. You are so old and crumbling. That is all you have left. Goodbye, Bardock. Bardock had reverted to his base form, all the key had left from his body, and he was essentially dead. His body was floating away in space and was picked up by a crying Maya. Goku, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, as Luke began punching the chest of Goku. Ow, jeez, kid. What was that for? Luke and Maya both looked over in shock. Goku was now awake. Where am I? Why is Vegeta and Majub asleep? Oh, Cell. Now I remember, we were fighting him. How long have we been out? You guys have been unconscious for th over 30 years. You were once a part of Cell. He had absorbed you and stolen your powers. He took over the universe. So many have died now. Even your father just gave his life for the cause. My father. Bardock, huh? Wow, Cell's gotten really strong to take even him out. Well, he had grown weak through old age. He must go and defeat Cell now. I don't know if I can beat him right now. He has grown far more powerful than when we last fought, and even then I had trouble with him. I have one plan. I need to use the Spirit Bomb. Goku flew a bit distance away and put his hands in the air. An energy ball appeared from his own Genki and had the natural Genki around. Everyone, please lend me your energy. Raise your hands. We can defeat Cell with this together. Vegeta, Oob, everyone else kept Cell distracted so that he can gather this energy. And then Goku said, King Kai, please tell everyone about this. Goku did not have enough time though. The others couldn't hold Cell for long. He had to use what he had. Goku threw the spear bomb at Cell and started pushing it towards him. He then went Super Saiyan 4 Blue to push it even harder. Perfect Cell then pushed his once green legs back to golden and did his full power Kamehameha. He pushed it at the Genki Dama or the Spirit Bomb and knocked it right back into Goku. With the bomb dissipating and Goku's body no longer there, everyone thought he was dead and thought that the Spirit Bomb had failed, and they thought Doom was their fate. But moments later, Goku was back in a fury. He was changed, and so was his power. Goku was now Ultra Instinct Omen, and at first was equal to Cell, but would soon overpower him as the Ultra Instinct got stronger. Everyone noted the similarities of Goku's new form with Bardock's mastered Ultra Instinct. But Perfect Cell, along with his golden form, would attain his final step of evolution towards perfection. He had attained God Key, giving him a huge power boost and pushing him over the edge on Ultra Instinct Omen Goku. Goku kept fighting, but even his newfound reactability couldn't defeat Cell. Goku was knocked back far away and landed right next to Luke and Maya. Here Goku, take these, put them on your wrists. Why? Goku, just do it now. Goku put the ancient wristband on and his power grew tremendously. Remember, for each user using one of them, it would grow their power tens of times. So if Goku wore both, it would be tens of times, times, tens of times, so he'd be a lot stronger. In fact, his powers grew, grew so tremendously that Goku was essentially able to easily defeat Perfect Cell. 
he reverted Cell back to his non-golden form, and in just a few punches, wrecked Cell so hard and then finished him with a Kamehameha that Cell got to the point where he couldn't even regenerate anymore. And all of Cell Jr.'s died with the death of Cell himself. Goku reverted back to his base and looked down at the wristbands. These are not really fair. It gives you power you didn't work for. I might as well destroy these. No, Goku, wait. These are the, are sacred and shall not be destroyed. Trust us, we won't use them for evil reasons. We're, we're looking to find the full set of the sacred armor used by the knight who defeated Darkness. Darkness? Is he strong? Why, yes. We don't know how strong, but he's been talked about in legends. Goku walked over to his father's dead body, put his hands over it. He tried to use the, his key as a refibrillator to bring him back. After a few unsuccessful attempts, his final attempt would work. Bardock coughed up blood and came back up alive. Goku would use the Dragon Balls to wish everyone killed by Cell to be brought back to life and this brought back many billions of people including many of Goku's friends and family. With Cell defeated, all seemed to be good in the world, but Luke and Maya still had a mission, to finish finding the set of the knight that had defeated Darkness, where many parts of his suit had spread across the universe once Darkness had been defeated. The knight had believed that this much power could grow too strong and be too corrupting in many hands, and that's why he destroyed the suit and spread each piece across the universe. This leads us to the next phase of Luke and Maya's adventure, searching for the ancient set of the night. Dende and Popo talk to Luke and Maya about the ancient night suit, so Luke and Maya go to the lookout, and Dende says the ancient night suit was worn by the warrior who defeated the ultimate evil, the evil that was going to wipe out the universe. Now, the person who donned this ancient knight suit wasn't very strong in his own right, but this suit grants nigh infinite power, nigh infinite durability, nigh infinite speed, and the helmet grants you ultimate awareness and near ultimate knowledge. And so with this, the knight defeated this evil that was going to wipe out the universe, and the knight, knowing that this suit could corrupt him, knowing that it could corrupt anybody else and if bad guys got their hands on it, it could be the end of the world, end of the galaxy, or end of the universe. This knight, he spread around the suit to different planets around the universe so that nobody would gather them together. But Dende does not want them completely spread out. He wants to know where they're at at all times, making sure they're watched. So Dende wants them to be brought back to the lookout so that they can defend it and so that they know where the suit is at all times so nobody can use it. Dende knows of the first location of where some of the parts are, and that is on planet Jotnar. Now he warns Luke and Maya about the beings that live on planet Jotnar, that they are giant people that can manipulate ice and they're also very strong. So are we talking about ice giants here? Maya asked. Then they said, sure, I guess that's basically what they are, but you guys need to be careful they may be strong, but also they can freeze you guys. And if you guys get frozen, well, your power isn't going to break you out of it. You'll just shatter to pieces. Just make sure you don't get caught by their ice. Here you go, guys. Nos here. Pan and Oob's kid. He's going to go to accompany you guys so that you guys have a third person. You guys are going to need all the help you can get. Sorry, Goku just isn't going to come. None of the main Z fighters are going to come because they're busy rebuilding an Earth and a galaxy that was ruined by Cell. So, Nos is a kid of Pan and Oob from Dragon Ball Absalon, so all credit of this character goes to the creator of Dragon Ball Absalon. I love that show. I haven't watched it the past few months, but holy crap, I love it, and I love the concept of Pan and Oob having a kid. And so, that character is from that, and he's going to be in this series accompanying Luke and Maya on their journey to gather the ancient knight suit. Now, since Nos is part Saiyan, he can go Super Saiyan. He also has some hacks that was passed down from Majub, like Nas can partially heal and he can partially regenerate. He doesn't have a candy beam though. So Luke, Maya, and Nas get in their spaceship and put planet Jotnar on their radar and they start heading off to planet Jotnar. On the way, Luke and Maya and Nas are talking to each other, getting to know each other because they don't really know Nas. Nas is a mild-mannered kid, he is respectful and begins to sort of get a crush on Maya. And Luke, being their protective brother, is kind of just negating that. They finally get to the point where they're getting close to planet Yodnar. They put on their cloaking device on their ship so that they don't get seen by the frost giant. Now they land and they see a kingdom, a beautiful, beautiful kingdom made completely of ice with giants walking about. Now they land close and they kind of look in and these giants are peaceful. They're 
people who work jobs nine to five, they have hospitals for the people that are sick or wounded, and they seem to be of complete peace and harmony. They don't even have a military, and this really shocks Luke, Maya, and Nas because they expected these giants to be brutal people that killed for fun and just incinerated and froze people, and that's not what they were. In fact, they watched for hours throughout the city and didn't see any fighting, any crime, anything. And they just started walking about. And then the Frost Giants would just walk by Luke, Maya, and Nos and just nod towards them, say, have a good day. And that was really confusing to them. They expected these giants to be trying to kill them to go and on their on their quest to get this ancient night suit pieces. And so this leads to them getting close to the kingdom, the castle of this city and they see that the king of the frost giants is sitting out and about and interesting enough he is actually very small compared to the rest of the frost giants now yes he would dwarf any of the three of our heroes in size he's probably about eight feet tall but most of these frost giants are 20 30 feet tall so luke and Maya are questioning why he's so short compared to the rest but still so tall now they go and confront this king and he asks you three non-frost giants, what are you doing here? Where are you from? And Luke and Maya then both say that they're from Earth. We're here to get the ancient night suit that has been spread around, and one of the locations is here where some of the parts are. Oh, I know what you're looking for. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to get that. That is in the giant cave in the mountain over there. Along the way in the cave, which is several miles of travel, there is a bunch of old frost giants of our people who were rejected, were neglected from our society because of how they acted. They were criminals, they were bad people. All of them went to that cave because it's really cold in there and it's easy for them to hide and do whatever they want. So you're going to have to get through them and I can't send you guys any help. We don't have an army. We don't need an army. We defend ourselves when we need to and we don't have any natural warriors. Well, you guys, I can tell by sensing your power, you guys seem to be strong. I think you guys might be able to handle it yourself. Just be careful. Well, thanks, King of Jotnar. What's your name, by the way? Oh, just call me King. You don't need to know my name. That's not really important. But just know, go to the mountain over there, get over there, and go through the cave, and just be careful. And eventually, you will find pieces of that suit that landed here. Luke, Maya, and Nos go through the mountain, slay a bunch of bad people, of course, the Frost Giants are strong, but not anywhere near strong as them. Not, they didn't even need the ancient wristbands to actually fight them. And they end up finding the sword and the helmet. Now, the sword actually amplifies the power of the user and can shoot key blasts. And the helmet makes the user's head nearly impossible to hurt, and it increases the awareness and the knowledge of the user. They figure out that once the entire set is gathered, the sword has nigh infinite power, cut through nearly anything. The sword and the helmet lead to the next clue of the location of the armored suit, and that is on planet Moosepel, not too far away, and would be a short travel time in their ship. Once they gather their new materials, they are now having three of the pieces of the actual ancient knight. They have the helmet, they have the sword, and they have the ancient wristbands, which are essentially the final piece of the night suit. The ancient wristbands were the final piece that binded the suit together to have nigh infinite power. So they head to planet Moosebell, and they meet a man named Surtur, a fire giant that is very powerful. Now they were questioning, why did they just go from a planet of ice giants to a planet of fire giants? How coincidental is that, that two of the pieces of the night suit are not far from each other and both land on planets of giants that are opposite powers of each other. But Surtur is the only fire giant. There's none other than him and he's huge. He dwarfs the other ice giants in size. He's hundreds of feet high, hundreds of feet wide, and they can sense his overwhelming power. What do you guys have business doing here? Uh, we're looking for the night suit. Peaches landed here many years ago. And it's our job to gather it. Oh, that knight, that knight suit. I've been guarding it so that nobody ever comes here again and steals this knight suit from us. That knight killed my father many years ago. I am the son of Surtur. I am Surtur Jr. Surtur could have incinerated the universe instantly, but what did he do? No, he wanted to have fun with it. He wanted to use his power for fun, and he let himself get killed by some stupid guy with a sword. I will never let that happen again, and I promise you one day, my father will be back to destroy the universe and especially kill you guys. 
So this leads to what needs to be a battle. Luke, Maya, and Nos have to fight Surtur Jr. Let's call him Surtur for now to get this ancient suit to get the rest of it or the next few parts of it and they can't do anything to Surtur. He's too strong. His fire burns them partially and he is guarding the suit. They can't leave this place but they also can't get past him and even with their wristbands and Nos going Super Saiyan they are not enough power to defeat him and this leads to Luke thinking of using the stuff they had already gathered. Luke puts on the helmet and his awareness is vastly increased then he picks up the sword his power is increased and and Luke with the ancient sword and the ancient helmet along with his ancient wristband slices Surtur in half and kills him the fire from his body dims and now he's just a giant no fire nothing the top half of his body falls to the ground and his legs fall back Surtur is now dead and now Luke and Maya pick up the shield and the chainmail they just need the rest of the suit, just the actual suit, and then they're done. And the clue to the next location is in the other world. After discovering the clue to the final piece of the Ancient Knight, Luke and Maya head off to the other world to attempt to find it. After finally reaching the outer rim of the other world, they are shocked when the pieces of the Ancient Knight start pushing themselves deeper into the other world. Finally, they reach a distant plain that is covered in a field of the remains of countless dead soldiers. The bracelets, the chainmail, the sword, and the helmet seemingly begin to scream at the pile of corpses. Luke and Maya believe that the final piece of the ancient knight is amongst the pile of fallen soldiers, and they begin looking. Their ancient pieces are leading them astray constantly, leading them to different pieces of armor that ended up not being the one they were looking for. After hours of looking, they grew restless. Maya wondered why the pieces of the ancient knight acting out in the first place if they were just not going to help anyways. But their postures were stagnated by a chilling key that filled the entire realm. An aura of darkness seeped from pieces of armor floating in the air. A key far more powerful than they had ever sensed before. As the aura unfolded, it revealed the stature of a menacing figure, Demigra. Finally, after all these eons, I have found it. The ancient knight that defeated me, his gear crafted by such beings so powerful that only one of them exists in all of the infinite timelines of the universe. With Demigra revealing that he was the ancient darkness that had nearly wiped out all timelines and all the universes, Luke and Maya were filled with shock. How'd you get that? Maya screamed. Anyone can wear the armor no matter their morality. It is an armor of power for power. Now give me the rest. Before Luke and Maya could even respond, the bracelets, sword, helmet, and chainmail all flung towards the demon that enforces his will across entire timelines. Now he dawned the ancient knight that once killed him eons ago, and he wields that unmatchable power. All of the armor set had begun to grow gold, and it was now slowly being doused in his dark energy. Now you will be the first of my offerings, celebrating my long promised return. Demigra swung the sword upwards and aimed it at the duo, but before the attack could be unleashed, Demigra was distracted by a mysterious aura apparating in the sky. It was Time Patrol Trunks who came by with a mysterious figure. So yeah, Broku, hero of Kanton City, as I was saying, this timeline is seriously fucked. We really need to fix this one quick. Bardock's a god of destruction, there's Super Saiyan 4 Blue, even two mysterious humans that sound right out of one of Bola's fan fictions. Someone really messed up with this one. Broku only looked awkwardly away from Time Patrol Trunks, shrugging his shoulders and patting the back of his head. Future Trunks arrived with an incredibly powerful force at his side, a hero who had previously saved the timelines from Demigra, the true hero of Kanton City. The one who traveled through time and donned the Ancient Knight and first defeated Demigra. Now, Time Patrol Trunks and Broku must team up with Luke and Maya to defeat Demigra once and for all. Trunks introduced Broku and himself and told them of the situation. Luke and Maya would then activate their Kaiokens, and then both Trunks and Broku ascended into Super Saiyan. The four teamed up and began launching mixtures of key blasts at him. Trunks and Broku took the lead and began trading blows with Demigra, the two being pushed back up despite their 2v1 situation. Just as Luke and Maya were about to join in once more, Demigra activated the spell contained within the ancient helmet, and the dead soldiers around them began to raise, partially siphoning away the power within Demigra. The knights were just bone. Their armor dangled off their frames, but they still surged towards the attacking foursome. 
Trunks commanded Luke and Maya to take on the undead soldiers so they could focus on Demigra. While the soldiers were strong, they were not strong enough to take down the young brother and sister. They noticed something odd with each soldier they defeated. With each victory, a portion of the undead soul drifted into them, empowering them. The other halves of the souls flowed into the helmet that crowned Demigra. But even more quaint, the soldiers seemingly returned to normal form. Their flesh returned as they now brimmed with life energy. After slaying a few dozen soldiers, Luke and Maya now gained the power to rival Trunks and Broku, who were pushed to the brink of defeat. Demigra was still simply toying with them. As the final soul of the soldiers drifted into the ancient knight's helmet, it dissipated into nothingness. Demigra's power suffering a huge dip, but still strong enough to toy with the four warriors. Slowly, the once dead soldiers now rose from the ground. Many of them left in a daze, and one of them screamed out, We're alive, but if we're back, that means that... They looked behind them and saw a large figure that now donned the ancient helmet. This figure had a menacing aura and had one of its eyes covered with a patch. Who are you? Trunks questioned. I'm Odin, Lord of Valhalla, King of the Einaryar, and the Allfather, the God of all gods. It is my thanks to you for restoring the souls of my men. You thus restored my body into the world of the sacred. Now, help me free the gods that dwell in the remaining pieces of the ancient knight. Baldur rests in the armor, Loki in the bracelets, Hodor in the chainmail, and Frey in the sword. He is using the power of the true gods to submit his will. Odin would then face off against Demigra. He would say, Charm 2, heal. Charm 3, protect. Charm 11, victory. And Charm 15, empower. As Odin casted his charms, all the charms came to fruition. Everyone was healed. As Demigra struck Trunks with a sword of Frey, the charm made it simply phase through him and no damage appeared from the protection charm. The key of all of the warriors in the vicinity raised drastically, and then in mere moments, the 11th charm, the guaranteed victory, would fully materialize. Come, Gungnir, Odin would yell. Odin held out his arm. Gungnir, traveling at immeasurable speeds across timelines and universes, answered the call, launching itself right into Odin's grip. Odin's immeasurable power multiplied somehow and rushed into battle against Amigra. With a flurry of strikes from his spear, he damaged Demigra and produced holes in the armor, as well as removing the Sword of Frey from his grip. The sword landed in Maya's grasp. Though the battle had seemingly shifted, Odin's power ceased to nothingness and fell into a grovel. His fingers unraveled around his mighty spear as it fell to the ground. It seems being asleep for so long has caused me to be quite a bit rusted. Demigra smiled menacingly and tried to take advantage of the situation, and he filled his hand with his negative key, aimed it down at the Allfather. But before a strike could land, his attention shifted elsewhere. As he saw the two siblings wielding godly weapons charging him, Maya was aiming the Sword of Frey at the chink in the armor, Luke doing so as well with Gungnir. Demigra simply stopped their attack by gripping the weapons at the blade. The siblings struggled mightily, but slowly their weapons pushed forward. They noticed behind them a helping set of hands, for it was Broku, who was now in Super Saiyan 5, Blue, Kaioken times infinity, Ultra and Stego, holding the weapons from behind. Finally, the weapons succeeded at piercing Demigra and finally killing him thanks to the final push from Super Saiyan 5, Blue, Kaioken times infinity, Ultra and Stego, but Broku. Odin would thank them all for their deeds and took back the possession of the ancient knight pieces, saying that he now must go on a journey to unseal the gods that trapped inside of it. Meanwhile, Trunks tells Luke and Maya that they must become time patrollers, if they wish to survive, as he has called Zeno to wipe out this absolutely batshit timeline. Luke and Maya agree to join and are taken to Kanton City. With their return, everyone begins cheering Broku as the hero once more, for it was he who issued the final push to end Demigra's life, for it was Broku who was the greatest, most powerful warrior in all of Dragon Ball, the most powerful warrior in all of fiction. He transcends fiction. He's the kindest, the smartest. The strongest, most sexiest, most muscular character in all of, of my timeline. Oh sh! Thank you so much, Zeno. That timeline was fucked.